October 12, 1972 A small chartered plane takes off from the South American country of Uruguay, bound for Santiago, the capital of Chile, with a few healthy rugby players on board. On October 12, there is a storm in the mountains due to which the plane cannot go forward. The plane is landed for the night in the city of Mendoza, Argentina. The next day, October 13, 1972, the plane takes off again. At 2.18 p.m., the pilot saw that the weather had cleared, so the journey remained quite pleasant for the next hour. At 3.21 p.m. the pilots take off the plane again. The plane is approaching Santiago, but still in the hills. During descent, a sudden violent turbulence is seen. At the same time, a lot of clouds come around, suddenly the alarms start ringing in the plane, the pilots realize that there is a huge rock very close in front of them. They try to turn the plane upwards, but alas, it is too late. On the way up, the back of the plane hits a hill, destroying everything in the plane. The plane now ends. It is lying broken on an unknown hill at a height of 3,570 meters. Amazingly, 33 of the 45 people on the plane are still alive. The only problem is that many of them are injured and no one knows where they are, and the harrowing story of survival has only just begun is. On the night of October 13, the surviving passengers were in high hopes. Five injured passengers could not survive that snowy night. The number of survivors was now reduced from 33 to 28. Three days after the October 16 crash, Fernando Prado wakes up from his coma to find his mother killed in the crash and his 19-year-old sister injured. Prado tries his best to keep his sister alive by bringing her food and water. Eight days after the crash, his sister also passes away. October 21, 1972 After that day, the survivors began to feel a severe lack of food and used to eat very little every day. By the 11th day, the food was completely gone and some people tried to eat parts of the planes like the cotton inside the seats and the leather on the seats, but this made them even sicker. With no option but to starve to death, these survivors did something that will blow your mind. They decided to eat the dead bodies of their friends and family to survive. And there's no way it wasn't an easy decision to make because most of the people who were killed in the crash were friends. The idea first came to Canessa. So he tried first. Some people tried the food but could not digest it at all. They forbade it at that time, but after two days passed when no other option was shown, they finally made human flesh their food. Sixteen days after the October 29th crash, this food source for survivors was also dwindling rapidly. Things couldn't have been worse but then that night it turns out that a sudden snowstorm comes down the hill so fast that the plane is completely covered in snow. Eight people lost in the ice and died of suffocation. Now only 19 survive. On November 15, 33 days after the crash, the three men set out to find help only to find the back of their plane collapsed after hours of searching for help. This was the part of the plane that had already broken. 59 days after the December 11th crash, another storm hits, killing three more survivors, leaving only 16 left. Climbing the hills in a westerly direction, they needed a way to sleep at night. How to survive in minus 30 degree Celsius night? The next day is December 12th, two months have passed since the crash. These three brave men, Prado, Canessa and Byzantine, set out for the second time without a mountain ring to climb the glacier of air. It meant that they had to go up the hill first, before going down, slowly, step by step, they kept on moving, on and on. The second day came, the third day came, and on the morning of the fourth day, they realized that there how wrong the guess was. Running low on food, the Byzantine decide to turn back and head to the crash side, leaving only the two survivors to continue. So that less food is needed. December 15 now only Prado and Canisa continue to advance. After three hours they reach the height of the mountain. 
and it seems to them that all around, the hills are only hills in the distance, nothing but snowy hills. Then in the far western horizon they see two mountaintops with no snow and guess we should keep traveling in that direction. Prado and Canisa spend several days hiking, they keep doing it and finally, after nine days of tracking, on December 20th, they see the presence of humans. And then on the other side of the river, three people sitting on a horse appear. Prado tries to shout but the noise of the river is so loud that his voice cannot reach him. But one of them sees Prado and Canisa and looks at them and shouts back that tomorrow. He says I will come again tomorrow. The next day the man comes again on a horse and this time brings with him some paper and a pen. He attaches this paper with a stone and a pencil. Through a thread and to the other side of the river and throws Prado writes on this paper. I come from a plain that fell in the mountains. I am Uruguayan. We have been walking for ten days. My wounded friends are on the crash side of the plain. We are weak. We don't even have the courage to walk. Please save us. Where are we? On the other hand, the man who received this letter was a farmer from Chile. He reads the note and signals to them that I understand. After talking with his two remaining companions, he finds out. Some two months ago in a news I heard that a plane had crashed. Farmers bring Prado and Canisa to the city of Los Mints by horse. It turns out that he had hiked 61 kilometers on foot in the last 10 days on his own hope. The Chilean Air Force sends three helicopters to perform the rescue. Army officers interview Prado and Canisa to find out location information. Prado brought the pilot's flight chart with him. And they were measuring on the map where they were hiking. Army officers bring them sitting in a helicopter. The 22nd of December 1972 70 days after the crash, two search and rescue helicopters finally arrive. A total of 16 survivors are rescued here to save their lives for the remaining survivors. The condition of these survivors was very bad, but they all recover. <laughs>